Hi everyone, my name is King Ivy, and this is Introduction to Python Web Scraping. And in today's video, what I'll be demonstrating is how to download images off a website. So this is a really easy and effective technique to gather a lot of images off a website. And you may use, need to use it for a report, or you may need to gather it for your application. For whatever reason, you need to download a lot of images. So it's very easy to do but teaches a lot of important fundamental lessons when using Python for developing a web crawler. So here I have a website called, which is the University of Waterloo's website, where I work, where I went to university slash college, uh, really important place to me. And periodically I want to, you know, check out the website. There's lots of cool images here. Maybe I want to download a couple, uh, see, see what I can save. But instead of going and right clicking and saving each image, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use Python to web scrape it. So first thing I like to do, if you haven't checked the previous Python lessons, I recommend that you check those out because uh, they're going to use a lot of lessons that that we learned previously. Is I'm going to use the inspect and I'm going to see that it's an IMG tag. From here, the really important information here is going to be the source, which tells me about the file. It tells me where the file is stored on the website. And for the most part, not all image images, but most images are going to be in this IMG tag. So you can see here it's stored somewhere else. But it's also might, for example, it might not give you the full URL. It might give you a relative hyperlink, which would mean that you would have to give the base of the website, which is in this case urlu.ca, and then give the and then add the rest of the relative hyperlink to actually go to the website. So if we check this out, we're going to go soup is equal to make soup. Uh, I'm going to pull up the University of Waterloo link here. I'm going to get rid of this part. And what we're going to do here is we're just going to do a simple for loop. So we're going to go image soup dot find all. And I'm going to find all the IMG tags. So I'm just going to simply print this so we can check that out, see what it looks like. Okay, I forgot the semicolon there. It's a good reminder. So if we go to the top, we're just going to look at the first instance. You're going to see here IMG tag, the source information, uh, this alt, which actually gives me a lot of good description that I might want to use. So if I wanted to get just the source information, what I do here is use my get function which allows me to get information within a within a tag. So I go ahead and run that. You're going to see here it's going to give me the links, which is really useful. So what we're going to do next is I want to make sure that I have always always have the correct link because sometimes here it gives me the relative hyperlink. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to assign this as temp. And then what I'm going to say here is if temp the first character in temp which is the square brackets colon one so if this is not familiar recommend that you check out the other videos and we're going to make that equal to this slash here and if that's the case what i wanted to do is i'm going to create this new variable called image i'm going to go plus temp so basically adding the base of the website otherwise just make image equal to temp Nothing too complicated there. So if I were to print image here, it should give me the full link, which it does here, which is really useful, exactly what we want. Next thing we want to do is we need to actually be able to write this file to a, write this URL to a file, read it, and then basically write it to a file. So the way we do that is we can name it whatever we want. So I'm going to call it image file for lack of a better description. I'm going to go open. So this is where we're actually going to create the file. What we need to do here is we need to give it a file name plus, in this case, because it's an image. And this concept works for a lot of things. Like if you want to save an Excel document or you want to save a particular any other item off the web. Uh, you'd follow the same concept. So here we're saving it as a JPEG though. So I need the file name. You could also give it a file path, but I'm just going to default it to where my PyCharm uh, 
project is. And then as well, you need to indicate whether or not it's uh, read only, I can write back. In this case, I'm going to write back. And then essentially what we do next is we go uh, image.file and then I'm going to write to it. So now that I've opened the file, now I need to write to it. So what we're going to do here is we're going to URL lib dot request dot URL open. And then I'm going to give it the link here. And then I'm going to read the file. Right, so it's going to go to this link, read it, and then write it to this file. Then I'm going to close this afterwards just so that we can go on to the next one. So pretty straightforward. Next thing we want to do is define this file name. So you'll notice that we had the alt, which actually was pretty good a lot of the times. So here, people asking questions at the information night. There's sometimes when it doesn't really give you a good description and it's blank. So we want to avoid giving a blank description just because it's going to save over the file continuously. So what we need to do first is we're going to go file, we're going to go name temp is equal to img get give me the alt and now we're going to follow a pretty similar scenario up here so we're going to go if if the length of name temp which means it's blank is equal to zero which mean which means it's blank now jump the gun what i'm going to do here is i'm just going to make it equal to i so i'm going to be i'm going to go file name is equal to the string of i and then I'm going to increment i so i is just going to be a number so I'm going to make i is equal to 1 here otherwise else I'm going to make file name equal to name temp pretty straightforward nothing too complicated here but let's go ahead and run it we'll see if whether or not it works Okay, you'll see here it actually did work. You can double click here, see all the images. I'm not sure why it looks not the greatest in uh, PyCharm, but let's go to the actual folder here. You can actually see it actually looks a little bit better. Uh, it is kind of gray, and you can see the description here, the names, young woman enters through wooden doors. It's kind of a weird description. African child drinking clean water. Some of these descriptions are maybe not not so kosher. Uh, Warriors basketball game, Justin Trudeau. Lots of uh, easy ways of, of picking up these images. Obviously, you could save it to a folder, save it to the day that you're actually running it, so you can see how these images change over time and maybe what images they actually pick. Do they pick a lot of ones with, with students in it? Do they pick ones with research in it, libraries, all these different components. So you can see how easy it is to actually be able to save and download and uh, write all these files uh, from a website to your folders or to wherever you're saving it. So if you have any questions or comments or any other topics that you want us to cover, feel, feel, feel free to write it in the comment section below. Uh, if you thought this video was helpful, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and I look forward to speaking to you next time. Thank you.